Welcome to Kara's Cures, where we explore the cutting edge of wellness. I'm Kara Sundlin. Are you feeling burned out already and it's only not even a month into the new year? <laughs> Don't feel bad, you're not alone. Today, my guest, Elena Armijo, is a leadership coach and founder of the C-Suite Collective. She teaches about how to stop burnout in the rise of hustle culture. Welcome back, Elena. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, so if you're feeling like you're just one urgent email away from losing it, you say we're not alone. The research says more than half of us are feeling burned out. Yes, we are in a new time again where it kind of is feeling like Groundhog Day again, right? So after what we've just experienced coming into 2022, the rise of the new variant again, uh, take a pause. It, listen, burnout is really we're just at an extreme level of stress. That's what everybody's doing. And you're not alone. I really do want people to know that because I think people feel like we should be in a different place right now. You should have all your goals set. It's a new year. It should feel like a new year. And that is the old culture that we're walking away from. Talk a little bit about hustle culture. Uh, you deal with companies all over the world. You deal with the people in charge. Is hustle culture no longer in vogue? Are we starting to see people who are in charge shift away? Or do we all still have to deal with this hustle culture? No, we're starting to see people shift away, which I'm really excited and hopeful about because it wasn't working. And that's exactly what we saw at the end of last year coming into this year is people we're at the end. And again, when you reach that end of the rope, it usually means you've been powering through for a long time. You've been operating on top of stuff, whether it's not enough time or money or support, all of those things are sort of compounding. And that's what's led us here. So employers are in a new conversation because it's not working. And they're saying, okay, we have people that are leaving or they're not healthy or they can't come to work. And we're always playing catch up. So how do we change this is the conversation they're in. And I know you advise those people. I think um, those who work would be interested to know what type of changes work and, and what should you say to your boss if you're burned out? Yeah, so the first thing you should say to your boss if you're burned out is, I have got to take a moment. So really, no shame in canceling that meeting today or saying, I need tomorrow off. I understand where we're at. This is what I need for my mental well-being to get back into the flow. Because the reality is, if you are already in burnout, the only thing to do is stop and pause to get back into action of where you wanna be. And as an employer, it's looking to see when you see this happening in your people, we can kind of see it coming. So being in step with your people to say, hey, I noticed that this is struggling. I noticed this, that a couple things have come in late recently or that we're not at the same pace that we were. What do you need? Do you need some time off? Do you need some more support? Do you need me to take this off your plate for a while while you're supporting your family at home? What needs to happen? So it's, it's both. It's being in step with your people and having the conversation from kindness and also speaking up for what you need. And this would apply to families too, right? Uh, we might notice it in our kids that they're back in school full time and all the activities and, and you notice that they're cranky and they're just thinking like, oh, wait a minute, I don't think, I, what if I can't do all this again? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those kids right now. Right. And my heart goes out to all of the teenagers, especially right now that are struggling with the pressure. So Parents, same thing. If you notice that it's happening, take a second and say, hey, we don't have to actually perpetuate more and more and more in this household. Let's slow down and talk about what's happening and what you need. What, where's the anxiety coming from? What are you stressed about? What can I talk through with you to have this maybe a different mindset about how they're approaching something? But again, it's in the relationship and the, the actual conversation. And in order to stop burnout, we need more than just a day off, right? You say we need to actually find out our why, asking why we're burned out and what need isn't being met. Yeah, and again, I'm gonna go back to time or money uh, as a form of a function of scarcity. That's what we talk about in the coaching world a lot is the idea that you think you have not enough of something. And so it's a vicious cycle because we're always trying to go get that something. So instead, you actually gotta find out what's the breakdown that's occurring. If you think you don't have enough money, let's actually get what's so. Get really clear. Where's money coming in? Where's it going out? What's the budget? What do we actually need to adjust instead of more, 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 which just creates that cycle again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And why is silence really so important? Oh my gosh, silence is where we hear ourselves. So in burnout culture and overwhelm, all of that silence goes away. So that's why I suggest taking the time off to get quiet and slow down and really listen inside yourself to, again, what do I want? I think all of our wants and desires and needs are hidden when we're not 
going slow enough to listen to ourselves. So if, if we just, for those who us are, who are, who actually operate in hustle culture or, uh, you know, yeah. they think that there's, th how would I even start to slow down? I mean, people might listen and go, okay, well, that's great, but I have this due and I have that due and, and uh, all of this. So how do you start one small thing you can start now to start building in some extra downtime, some more resilience? Yeah, one small thing. It's so good because you and I both are in health culture constantly, right? So I think about in the morning my tea. So when I have a cup of my tea that I'm preparing, right, right before I go into hours of conversations or my own version of hustle culture, which I am recreating and reinventing every moment, that tea is the moment where I can actually watch myself pour the water, taste a little bit of it, and not do anything for one full minute before I walk into the next thing. So really what I'm practicing is presence in the moment. But if that's where you got to start, start there. And if that's the only thing you do at the beginning of today, that is improvement. Right. And it depends on where you're at with that. Some of us, uh, you know, years ago, after talking to enough people like you, I worked into a, a small meditation practice in the morning. And I do think it really changes yeah. just having that. Yes. I look forward to it, right? It's I have to get up a little bit earlier, but I get up to basically do nothing and have some me time. So if your answer, like so many moms, is going to be like, what's missing? And it's me time. It's downtime. It's stuff that I'm place that I'm not busy. Um, we need to get OK with the art of doing nothing, of actually feeling like it's OK to do nothing. Yes, 100%. And, and it being allowed to do nothing, like giving ourselves permission to surrender to doing nothing, just like you're saying, or having some fun. Like it's actually fun to sit on the couch sometimes and do nothing and watch Netflix. You're going to have to work through a lot of your stories around why that's bad or not right. But when we get there, allowing the fun and surrendering to it. And exercise. I know we talk about this a lot, but um, even just going for a walk, a lot of people might be saying, I want to lose weight. It's on my goal. And then they're really they're really burned out, which from a biological point, you could have like adrenal fatigue from just constantly going, going, going. Um, if we, what, what do you suggest for those who are working too much and how they can build in a little bit of that fitness? Cause we know it helps bring back energy. Yeah. I, again, I would start there small increments, right? Don't overwhelm yourself with like, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this 45 minute workout right now because I need it, you know, and putting all that pressure on you slow. So even if you take 10 minutes to stretch, Put on a yoga stretch from YouTube, Google it, say 10 minutes of yoga and sit there and allow your body to start feeling again and build on that practice slowly over the coming days instead of running into 45 minutes. Yeah, I love that idea. And I often use free YouTube, whether you're starting a meditation practice or you want mini workouts, there's so many people out there who have free guided meditations or free five minute abs. So if you just even say, okay, I might be can't work to go 45 minutes to a gym every day, but I can tell myself three days a week, I'm going to promise myself I'm going to take a walk at lunch. Yes. And yes. then you build that because you might like it, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Do you foresee that um, we've had the great resignation? And of course, everyone wants to know, well, how do all these people resign? What are they doing for money? Uh, the great resignation was fueled by burnout, right? It was fueled by that. It was it was 100 percent part of the cause of it. And what we're seeing is when you get to that burnout stage, number one, people are done. There's no other like no other choice than to stop. And in that pause and in this slowness, people are reassessing what is really important to them. And that's where they're taking the time to say, okay, this isn't working for my life. This is costing me my health, my mental well-being, my emotional stability. So something's got to change. And that's where that creative conversation is starting. So um, I think that's been a big factor. So what do you suggest to people? Because, uh, you know, most of us still need to work and create income. And, and so it's, if it's not all or nothing, if it's not hustle, how do you have that fulfilling career that pays well, and maybe you don't mm -hmm. want to leave your job, but you need to ha have some things change. Yeah, I think it starts with asking you, getting really honest with yourself about what you want. And I'm not saying like, I want a million dollars, because, you know, we can all say that. right? And everybody wants a million dollars. But what, what do you want to experience in your life? That's usually where I start out. Instead of the goals, take those goals away for a second. And what's the experience you want to create? And for me, that's I want to experience joy. I want to experience freedom and flexibility and not have to be tied to my desk all the time. So when we start to really start making that list, it will emerge what job actually supports that, what employers support that list. 
And then from there, you can go and seek those positions. But without getting clear on what you really want to experience and why, why is it important for me to experience not being at my desk all day? Well, because I actually like to be moving. Movement to me is really important in my day. So I think we're really getting rid of the old idea that you can't have what you want, that you have to suffer and make some sacrifices. And there are sacrifices that are to be made, but they can be made in partnership with people instead of you are the one always suffering. Yeah. And are you noticing that um, companies are changing their policies or saying if, if you're out at an interview, I mean, people are like, oh, I, I want to let them know I'm a hard worker. So I don't want to talk about burnout. But what's changing? What are you telling executives to do to get the best talent now? Yeah, some of the executives that have come to me and that have hired me specifically to come in and work with them to change the culture in their company, the first thing that they're looking at is having a conversation with their people about what, why would you want to be in this company long term and how does that support your life? So they're actually turning the coin around. Instead of it being all about the employee supporting the employer, the employer is now looking and saying, how do your personal values, how you want to live, how you want to work, how does that, how can we support you? And then we all win together. So that's what I see changing. And the companies that are willing to do that are seeing tremendous success in people coming and number one, uh, saying yes and being hired, but also from the ground up creating connection and culture in a new way. Is the idea of having at least some time to work remotely just a given that you need to give your employees that now and that maybe that you're not wrong to ask for it? I, I think it is a given, but I wouldn't, I would invite people to look at it from a place of, again, what can we create in partnership? So there are going to be days that you need people in your office. And if that's true, what can you partner with to make that possible as opposed to, so such a black and white, yes or no, you're either all the way here or you're not. So the hybrid model is really working for a lot of people and it changes. Some months we might need you in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and other months we might need you in at all. So that's really what we're seeing. Yeah. Bottom line, uh, you want people, you have a podcast, Manner of Speaking, and you want people yeah. to know that it's okay to pause and that by even just asking those questions, what do I need, we can start to erase the burnout. Yes. Yes. That's the bottom line. Elena, I appreciate it. Let everyone know where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me at elenaarmijo.com or the c-suitecollective.com. And again, in a manner of speaking, the podcast. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you being on Kara's Cures. Thank you so much. This is always so fun. Thank you. And you can find more episodes of Kara's Cures where we explore the cutting edge of wellness right here on the WFSB app, also on the podcast if you're listening there. Thanks for being here. Also, follow me on social media at Kara Sundlin. I share these there. Have a great day and be well.